Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome all viewers. Following my recent video, Advice to Ali Dawa, I would like to address some of the people in the comments that are under the impression that publicly speaking about a public figure's public behavior is against Islam. This is unfortunately a somewhat common misconception many Muslims have. So our brother Muhammad James, he took the time to write a very beneficial article entitled The Permissibility of Speaking About People Calling to Misguidance. For those of you not familiar with our brother Muhammad James, I highly recommend you watch the video we did together on this channel. And in this video, I'm going to be reading through this article. However, before doing that, I would like to preface with three points I would like the viewers to consider. Point number one is consider our priorities as Muslims when it comes to our religion. The thing that unites us is the revelation, the guidance that Allah sent us. Understanding that guidance, implementing it properly, and representing it accurately is of the utmost importance. The second point I would urge you to consider is that unfortunately, sometimes when people are advised privately, they do not accept the advice. Sometimes people will have good thoughts about the one being criticized, assuming that if they were privately advised, they would right all of the wrongs. And they will have foul suspicions about the one who's doing the criticizing, thinking that they have an ulterior motive, or just assuming that they haven't already advised the individual privately. But a hard fact that we all need to internalize is that not everyone accepts advice. Some people might be advised for years about many different things by many different people, and they always reject the advice. And the longer you advise them privately without saying anything publicly, the longer they are going to be misrepresenting Islam without any repercussions. And that leads me to the third point, which is sometimes, unfortunately, privately advising certain individuals can cause more harm than good. And there are many different examples I could use from personal experience. Sometimes when you're advising somebody privately, it becomes a personal thing between the two of you. So they might try to manipulate you and play with your heartstrings so that you let them continue doing what they're doing. And this can lead to you actually compromising your religion for the sake of your personal relationship with the human being. Another thing that can happen is people can weaponize your private conversations. They can try to give the public a false representation of what's happening privately. And it can even lead to harassing messages and like a, a personal vendetta. So I just wanted to present this information as food for thought because things are not as simplistic as many of the commenters seem to imagine. But more importantly than any of that, let's read this article and see what our religion, let's see what the Quran and Sunnah say about this topic. The Permissibility of Speaking About People Calling to Misguidance, written by Muhammad James Sutton for Institute.com. After praising Allah and sending prayers and peace upon our Prophet Muhammad, his family, and his companions, I will begin. One of the many issues racking the minds of many Muslim youth throughout social media is the issue of public criticism. This can be seen in the comment sections of multiple videos in which one of the many brothers from Ahl Sunnah has to admonish one of these many callers to misguidance on a public forum. You will see people in the comment section saying things like, couldn't you have just contacted him privately? Or it is better for you two to sit down and discuss the issue in private. There are various comments that bear similar meanings. That being said, let's take a look at the issue. Is it permissible to speak about public callers to misguidance without advising them in private first? When a person makes a video or gives a public lecture in a masjid or in a conference that clearly calls to misguidance, the message of misguidance has been sent. The damage is done. I think what these commenters fail to understand is that whatever misguidance that caller is relaying to the people has already reached the people in large numbers. Our duty now becomes to protect the people against the misguidance that person called them to. The people should not see the public advice given as a frontal assault on the person, but they should see it as advice to the Muslims to protect them from accepting that misguidance that was relayed to them. Similar to how you would protect your family from any physical or mental harm, the people of the Sunnah want to protect the Muslims from the harm of misguidance that many false callers to Islam are propagating. If that involves admonishing certain individuals in public within the guidelines of the Quran and Sunnah, so be it. However, we need to be very clear about what those guidelines are, and that is the purpose of this article. Before we get into the subject of public criticism, we want a clear understanding of what backbiting is. Most people conflate public criticism with backbiting, and that is easy to do if a person has not been raised up with knowledge of the Quran and Sunnah. Once we look at the evidences from the Quran and Sunnah regarding the two, they should be clearly distinguishable for those that Allah gives the ability to see. May Allah increase us all in beneficial knowledge. What is backbiting? Backbiting is saying about your brother that which he does not like being said about him. This meaning of backbiting came in the following hadith. 
Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Do you know what backbiting is? The companion said, Allah and his messenger know better. Thereupon he said, Backbiting is mentioning about your Muslim brother something which he dislikes to be mentioned about him. It was said to him, What if my Muslim brother is as I say? He said, If he is actually as you say, that is backbiting. But if he is not as you have stated, you have slandered him. The things that can be mentioned about him could be his physical appearance, his level of intelligence, his looks, his body shape, his fashion, his social status, etc. However, that is only if these things are being mentioned without a purpose. This is something that we have to be clear on right now. It is not permissible for any person to just sit around and talk about another Muslim for no reason. Whether he is talking about the previously mentioned topics or separate issues about the person, if there is no benefit for speaking about the person, you should refrain from saying anything about him. This can be understood from the general statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the following hadith. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, The Prophet wasallam said, He who believes in Allah in the last day must either speak good or remain silent. Imam Anabawi said the following about this hadith. This is a clear-cut statement to show that a person should not talk except if his speech is going to be righteous speech. Righteous speech is the type of speech in which the benefit is apparent. Whenever a person doubts the appearance of benefit in his speech, he does not speak. What is the benefit that Imam Anawawi mentioned in his statement? The benefits of speech that would appear to be backbiting are mentioned by Imam Anawawi himself. That is what we are going to look at now. However, before I move to the next topic, let us be very clear that backbiting is saying something about your brother that he does not want to have mentioned about him with no benefit. You will see the evidence for the last part of that previous definition of backbiting in the next section, inshallah. When does it become permissible to publicly speak about a Muslim's mistakes? To keep this article brief, I'm going to translate what Imam Anawawi said. If anybody wishes to see what the Imam said for himself in Arabic, you can find it in Riyadh al-Salihin after Hadith 1530. Imam Anawawi wrote in Riyadh al-Salihin, Backbiting is permissible only for valid reasons approved by Sharia in which there is no other means to deal with the situation other than speaking about the person. These reasons are as follows. Number one, it is permissible for an oppressed person to speak before the judge or someone in a similar position of authority to help him or her establish his or her rights by telling him, this person wronged me and has done such and such to me, etc. Number two, it is permissible to seek somebody's assistance in forbidding evil and helping someone change his or her immoral conduct. One can say to the person who can offer such assistance, so-and-so does such-and-such such evil deeds. Can you exhort him? This is permissible as long as one has only the intention to forbid evil. If, however, one intends something other than the forbidding of evil, this act becomes unlawful. Number three, one who seeks a legal verdict on a certain matter may point out the faults of another person or relate private information about a specific person. In this case, you can say to the mufti, the religious scholar who issues verdicts, my father, brother, spouse, or any random person treated me unjustly. Is this behavior on their part correct? And how can I refrain from being oppressed by them and receive my rights? It is only permissible to display these individuals' faults if there is an absolute requirement to do so. However, it is better to say, what do you think of someone who did such and such? Because you reach your objective without mentioning the person. This does not mean that naming the person in question is not permissible. Hadith number 1535 makes this point clear. Number four, warning the Muslims from evil and advising them, and we will look at this issue from different perspectives. First, we have the criticism of the narrators of hadith and the people that give testimony against perpetrators of crimes. By a consensus of the scholars, it is permissible to expose the faults of these individuals, and in some situations, it can be obligatory to speak about them. Second, we have criticism which comes in a sitting that a person's in-laws from a girl he is seeking marriage with or people that he is seeking a business partnership with are seeking counsel about the person. This can also include people wanting to leave money in this person's possession, people that might want to interact with him or her on a project or in da'wah, or a person that wants to live next to him. It is an obligation upon the person whose advice or counsel has been sought to disclose everything he knows about the person. In this case, it is permissible for him to mention all the bad things that he knows about the person if it is for the purpose of advising the people seeking his counsel not to deal with that person. Third, if you see a person of religious knowledge frequently sitting with innovators or people of low moral standing, 
If he is afraid that the person will become affected by sitting with these individuals, he should advise him by exposing the situation of the people that he is sitting with. However, this has to be done with the condition of giving the person advice. And this is where a lot of people make a mistake. Some people might be driven by jealousy of another person and the shaitan deceives him into believing that he is speaking about those individuals for the purpose of advice. Be mindful of this. Finally, if a person has a position of authority and he is not acting justly, it could be that he is not righteous in his decisions, he could be a sinful person, or he could be extremely heedless. These points should be mentioned to a person over him in authority to take action against him, even if it means removing him. A person that is fit for the position will then be placed in authority. Another scenario is that his faults can be mentioned so people can be cognizant of the things they need to be careful of and so they can deal with him in a wise way in accordance to his state and they are not deceived by him. This way the people set out to advise him to be upright and righteous in fulfilling his duties or he will be changed for another. Number five, if a person commits sins or speaks about sins he commits publicly or he is public about his innovations in the religion. This is similar to a person that drinks alcohol openly or speaks about drinking alcohol publicly, taking somebody's possessions or property publicly, taking money from taxes publicly, hoarding money in an oppressive manner, such as keeping the money from zakah, from the poor people, managing affairs that are against the guidance of Islam, etc. It is not permissible to mention affairs other than these or affairs similar to these that will expose a person's faults unless it is from one of the other previously mentioned reasons. Six, it is permissible to speak about a person for the purpose of identifying who the person is. If a person is well known by a particular nickname, such as something relating to a person who has very weak vision, a person who is handicapped from his legs, a deaf person, a blind person, a cross-eyed person, etc., it is permissible to identify them by that nickname. It is not permissible if you call them that nickname for the purpose of belittling them. If it is possible to identify them in another way with something that is more acceptable, the person should do so. Just like Imam Anubu, we said, a person must make sure there is a benefit from what he is saying and he should have the intention of giving advice. Otherwise, it is not permissible to speak about the faults of another Muslim. Of course, in our situation, we mainly deal with the fifth point that Imam Anubu, we mentioned. We are constantly in the position to point out some misguidance that a person is calling to. That is not because we view ourselves as the saved people and we view everybody else as misguided. However, it is because Allah blessed us to go and study his religion with the scholars of the Sunnah for many years and the majority of the people calling to misguidance did not do that. The majority of them, if not all of them, have not studied the religion at all. They go on social media speaking about issues of the religion without knowledge and it becomes our duty to point that misguidance out to the people. It has never been, nor will it ever be, a condition that we advise or admonish them in private once they make their misguidance public. Before I end this article, I will list the hadiths that show the permissibility of speaking publicly about a person to protect the Muslims. The first hadith, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, A man sought permission for audience with the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, Give him permission, but he is a wretched member of his tribe. Al-Bukhari used this hadith as evidence to show the permissibility of speaking publicly about corrupt individuals and people of doubt, callers to misguidance. We can clearly see the statement that the Prophet wasallam, said about this man before he entered his house, and the statement in Arabic is much stronger than it appears in English. The scholars will give different reasons as to why the Messenger wasallam, said what he said. But the only conclusive thing we have is that he informed Aisha of this man so she could inform the people that have to deal with him after his والسلام, death. The person was not an upright person, but the Prophet وسلم, still gave him his rights as a guest in his house. We can see another hadith similar to this from Sahih al-Bukhari. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, The Messenger of Allah والسلام, said, I do not think that so-and-so understand anything of our religion. Al-Bukhari said, Al-Layth bin Sa'ad, who is one of the narrators of this hadith, said, The two men mentioned by the Prophet والسلام, in this hadith were hypocrites, i.e. they revealed faith and concealed disbelief. Al-Hafidh bin Hajar disagreed with the statement of Al-Layth bin Sa'ad saying that the two individuals were from the hypocrites. There is no evidence of their names or whether or not they were from the hypocrites. Allah knows best. However, we can understand from this hadith the statement the Prophet والسلام, made about these two individuals. The Prophet ﷺ spoke publicly about the ignorance 
of the religion these two individuals have so the people would not be deceived by them or people like them and take knowledge from a person that does not possess it. Again, this was done in public and it was done for a purpose. If you'd like to read the entire article for yourself, you can check the link in the description. However, for now, I'm going to skip to the end. The author says, We as students of knowledge in the West have a duty in this society to protect our Muslim brothers and sisters from misguidance to the best of our capabilities. We will continue to warn against people that call to misguidance outside of the Quran and Sunnah, and we will continue to warn against people that lie about Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This religion was preserved by the Salaf, warning against people that tried to spread innovations and misguidance in this religion. We have books that could fill up an entire library dealing with the narrators of hadiths. And these books mention the good, the bad, and the ugly to protect the Muslims from accepting a hadith from a person that hadith should not be accepted from. Allah protected this religion and he will continue to protect this religion. The people he uses to protect this religion are the scholars of hadith that have love for Allah and his messenger wasallam, And they do not tolerate people saying anything about this religion that is not from the Quran and Sunnah. This is Islam. What a beautiful religion. I will leave you with this following statement from Muhammad ibn Sirin, may Allah have mercy on him, about the importance of taking knowledge from the scholars of the Sunnah, not ignorant YouTubers. He said, Indeed, this knowledge is faith, so carefully consider from whom you take your faith. That does it for this video. Allah knows best. Thank you for watching. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.